Hello everyone and welcome back to the selected chess games of Greco and this is part 2. And Greco has the white pieces in the first game and this game was played in 1620. And Giacchino Greco starts the game with playing e4, e5 by black, the player with no name, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, the Italian opening, bishop to c5, c3, knight to f6, and d4 by Greco. Black captured the pawn, and then c takes on d4, bishop to b4, check, knight to c3, blocking, but then black, captured on e4, knight takes on e4. Well, the pressure is on c3, but Greco castled and leaving the knight. Knight takes on c3, b takes on c3, and then bishop takes on c3. And black has two extra pawns in this position. It looks like black is doing fine. For the quick activity of his pieces, Greco is going for the pawn sacrifice. And he played queen to b3, attacking the bishop, and attacking on f7, and leaving the rook. But black played, bishop takes on d4. Actually, bishop takes on a1, was not winning for black, because of bishop takes on f7, king to f8, and then bishop to g5. And white is much better, blocking with the knight, and then rook takes on a1. White is winning. Let's get back to the real game. And before showing what happened in the real game, after queen to b3, d5 was the best move, defending. If bishop takes on d5, black is castling, and black is fine. Queen to b3, and in the real game, black captured on d4 with the bishop, and Greco captured on f7, bishop takes on f7, that's check, king to f8, and then bishop to g5, attacking the queen, defending with the bishop, bishop to f6, and then rook from a to e1, by Greco, controlling the open file, knight to e7, blocking the file, but white has the semi-open file, and white is better, white pieces are completely active, and look at black's pieces, Every piece of black is sleeping. Look at the queen and look at the bishop. They are stuck. And black pieces are all backed up. Also black rooks are not connected. This is not ideal position for black. But for white, white is doing a perfect job. A very flexible position for white. After knight to e7, Greco played, bishop to h5. And threatening checkmate. How to defend. Knight to g6. Blocking. Blocking the diagonal for the bishop. Greco played knight to e5. And once again, Giacchino Greco is threatening checkmate. Queen to f7. Checkmate. How to defend. Well, black. Captured on e5. Knight takes on e5. But then Greco captured the knight. Rook takes on e5 by Greco. Of course, in this position, capturing the rook with the bishop is out of questions because of queen to f7, checkmate. This is why black played g6, blocking, blocking the diagonal once again. And Greco played bishop to h6, check. And what else? We have bishop to g7, what now? Greco played rook to f5, check, sacrificing the rook, what a move by Greco. We have pawn takes rook, if king to e8, then queen to f7, checkmate. If king to e7 again, black is getting checkmated, and there is no defense, check, mate, queen to d5, what a beautiful checkmate, by the way. Let's get back to the real game. So Greco played rook to f5, check, sacrificing the rook, and black captured the rook. But then, there is checkmate in one move. Greco played queen to f7, check, mate, 
Just like Paul Morphy, isn't it? Or maybe Mikhail Tell. Mikhail Tell would do the same to his opponent. If his opponent would be as weak as black in this chess game, what a beautiful, sacrificial chess game by Giacchino Greco. And let's check out game number two in part two. So this is game number two in the selected chess games of Greco. Well, these are all my personal selections. So let's check out game number two. And once again, Greco has the white pieces. And this game was played in 1620. Greco starts the game with playing e4, e5, knight to f3, and then f6 by black. Incorrect move by black and inaccuracy. After knight to f3, knight to c6 is one of the most played moves in this position and black is doing okay. Black is fine, of course. Or knight to f6 would be a possibility in this position. And black is going for the Petrov defense, the Russian game. Let's take it back. So after knight to f3, we have f6 by black. And what would you do in this position? Well, Greco played, knight takes on e5, sacrificing the knight. And black captured the knight, but then queen to h5 by Greco. King to e7. If blocking with the pawn, then black is losing the rook and the game. White is much better. So after queen to h5, we have king to e7, defending. And then queen takes on e5 by Greco, king to f7, running away, and then bishop to c4, check, black played, king to g6, queen to f5, check, chasing the king, and hunting the king, king to h6, and then d4, that's a discover attack to the king, with the bishop, so g5, blocking, but h4 by Greco, threatening to play h takes on g5, out to defend. Running away again, king to g7, but Greco said, you are not running anywhere, and he played queen to f7, check, king to h6, and then Greco finally captured the pawn, h takes on g5, discovered check, double check, check. Mate, black is getting checkmated, and this was a beautiful checkmate by Giacchino Greco. And let's check out game number three in the selected chess games of Giacchino Greco. And this is game number three, and like in the previous games, Greco has the white pieces, and this game was played in 1620. And Giacchino Greco starts the game with playing e4, e5, knight to f3, d6, bishop to c4, bishop to g4, pinning the knight, h3, asking the bishop a question, and black captured the knight, bishop takes on f3, Greco captured back with the queen, and threatening checkmate, queen to f7, defending with the queen, queen to f6, but now, queen to b3, by Greco, attacking on b7, defending, knight to c3, and the threat is very obvious, in this position, Greco wants to play knight to d5, and that would be unpleasant for black, this is why, black played c6, not allowing knight to d5, defending on d5, with the pawn, what would you do, in this position, well Greco, played the most accurate move, and he played knight to d5, insisting on d5, and sacrificing the knight, temporary, but black played queen to d8, defending the queen, actually capturing the knight, is not working for black, 
because of bishop takes on d5 and winning the rook, winning the exchange, you can't defend, knight to d7, and bishop takes on a8, and white is much better. So after knight to d5, we have queen to d8, defending, and once again, Giacchino Greco, in 1620, when there was no information about how to play the accurate chess, how to play chess correctly, he played the most accurate moves constantly over and over again in his chess games. And once again, Greco played the most accurate move in this position. But can you guess that move? What would you do? Which move is the most accurate move in this position? Well, Greco played knight takes on b6, sacrificing the knight, temporary, and black captured the knight. Queen takes on b6, and then bishop takes on f7, check, king to d7, and then bishop takes knight, and getting back the material. And if queen takes queen, white can recapture the queen with the bishop, going back and defending the bishop, and white would be two pawns up. White has two extra pawns in this position. So black played d5, disconnecting the bishop with the queen. Greco captured the pawn, e takes on d5, and then queen takes on b3, and if pawn takes queen, then rook takes bishop, winning the piece and the game. What would you do again? Well, this is a very simple question, and Greco played, d takes on c6, simple and beautiful, that's check, between move, knight takes on c6, and then Greco this time, captured the queen. Bishop takes on b3. Well, black resigned, obviously. White has three extra pawns in a winning position. And three extra pawns is the equivalent of a minor piece in terms of value. So black resigned in this position. A simple and an instructive chess game by Greco. And let's check out game number four. And once again, Greco has the white pieces and his opponent is a player with no name. This game was played in 1620, like in the previous games. So let's check out this beautiful chess game. Greco starts the game with playing e4, e5, and f4, the king's gambit. And black didn't accept the king's gambit, and black played d5, the folkbeer counter gambit. Well, in this position, black has few tricks, but Greco didn't fall into the trap, and he played e takes on d5. If something like f takes on e5, then queen to h4 check, g3, and then queen takes on e4, queen to e2, and winning the rook, and the game. So d5 is the folkbeer counter gambit, but Greco played e takes on d5. The standard continuation in this position. Queen takes on d5. Knight to c3, attacking the queen. Queen to e6, and then knight to c3 by Greco. And black captured the pawn. e takes on f4, that's check. King to f2. It looks like black is doing a good job in this position. White is losing the casting rights. And let me show you the standard continuation in this position, knight to c6, or bishop to d7. These moves were okay for black, and black is doing a good job. But let's take it back. In the real game, black played bishop to c5, a petzer sees check, and gives check. These are the words of Bobby Fischer, and he was right. Black solved the check and give the check, but now he is in deep trouble because Greco played d4, and now black needs to deal with defending the bishop. After d4, black played bishop to d6, defending the bishop, but now bishop to b5, check. How to defend? We have king to f8, defending the king. If blocking the bishop, then rook to e1, Winning the queen. So after bishop to b5, we have king to f8. Running away. 
What would you do again? Well, Greco played the obvious move, and he played Rook to E1, attacking the queen. And for Black, defending his queen was much more important than getting checkmated. So after Rook to E1, Black played Queen to F5, defending the queen. And then Greco checkmated his opponent in one move. Greco played Rook to E8, checkmate. Wasn't this funny? And it was also instructive. So let's check out the final chess game of Greco in the selected chess games of Greco part 2. And this is game number 5 in my selected chess games of Greco. And unlike the previous games, this time Greco has the black pieces. And as always, his opponent is a player with no name. Once again, this game was played in 1620. So Greco's opponent, the player with no name, starts the game with playing e4, e5 by Greco, f4, the king's gambit, e takes on f4, knight to f3, g5, bishop to c4, and g4 by Greco, attacking the knight, knight to e5, attacking on f7, and defending the knight, defending with playing knight to h6, defending on f7, and the unknown player captured on g4, knight takes on g4, and getting back the pawn, queen takes on g4, Greco played d5, attacking the bishop, and for activating his pieces, and of course, as you can see, after d5, Greco is also attacking the queen with the bishop, that's a double threat for white. But in this position, white made his calculations, and he played queen takes on f4, leaving the bishop, d takes on c4, Greco captured the bishop, and then queen to e5, by white, that's check, blocking with the bishop, and then queen takes rook, he captured the rook, and he was doing a good job, maybe he was laughing out loud in this position, and maybe he was hoping for Greco to resign in this position, but Greco didn't resign, and he played queen to h4, that's check, king to f1, actually king to f1 was the only move for not losing the game immediately, if g3, then queen takes on e4, king to f2, and then queen takes on h1, and black is a piece up in a winning position, this time white needs to resign. After queen takes on e4, what happens if king to d1, then bishop to g4, check, mate. As you can see, white is in trouble. So after queen to h4, we have king to f1, defending the king. And then queen to f4, by Greco, king to g1. And then queen takes on e4 by Greco, again, with an immediate threat. Greco is threatening to play queen to e1, checkmate. So white is defending with playing h3, defending and hoping to escape with the king and bishop to d5. Again, Greco is threatening checkmate, queen to g2, defending with the queen, queen to g8. But now, f5 by Greco, reinforcements are arriving slowly. And also Greco is attacking the queen with the bishop, that's a discover attack, defending the queen and going back. f4 by Greco, attacking the queen, and there is no time for developing the pieces, like pushing the pawn or playing the knight. There is no time. White played queen to f3. Actually if something like knight to c3, then bishop to c5, check. King to f1, f takes on g3, knight takes queen, and bishop takes knight. And black is much better, black is winning in this variation. So after f4, we have queen to f3, defending the queen. And then Greco played queen to e1, that's check. Queen to f1, blocking with the queen. But now, bishop to c5, check. King to h2. Defending the king, 
and then Greco checkmated his opponent in one move. He played queen to g3, check, mate. Well, Greco was way ahead of his time. It must be so boring for Greco when he was playing in this era because he was by far the strongest player in this era. And he had no serious opponent, as you can see. So thank you for watching, and this was part two. And I hope to see you next time in part three. Take care, and bye-bye.